Mansfield today on a Saturday, it's time for us to catch up with mates. It's the weekend. It's time to just chill, sit back, haul a mate in or some mates in, and just, just chat, just have a, a tongue wag, just see what happens. Now, you may not know this name, but this name of the person sitting next to me uh, probably the most prolific, ongoing television producers in this country. Despite his age, he started working in the field very young and somehow through all the traumas and the, 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 the rubbish that we've had, at the state broadcaster and also in broadcasting in general. He survived it. And it's only out of the artist's respect for him that he has survived it. I'm talking about a gentleman by the name of Alan Ford. Alan? No. Jay, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm it is so good to first be seated with one of my heroes oh. in broadcasting. Number one. Number two, we worked as oppositions in the same stable at one point in time. Yes. Um, at seven or two and a half held. Yeah. Um, but also a great friend. And and we've done a lot of television shows or I've interviewed you with a lot of presenters along the journey. Yeah. Um, yeah. From doing stuff on your books when we went to the Game Reserve, yeah. to having you into an Aline show, to now being on your show is such an honor. So thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it has. It's been one of those where... Our paths have crossed where you suddenly get this phone call and you go, oh, Alan Ford, right, what's happening now? What do you, what, what do you want from me? Yeah. <laughs> Alan, what? Yeah. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so let, let me tell you a little interesting story. I want to tell you about one of my first, uh, how I fell in love with the radio. John Burks was one of them. Yeah. I mean, I loved him as a kid. I loved listening to, to no, this. Wait, hold it now. How did you first get into radio? Jeremy, uh, uh, I, I and this guy called Aki Anastasio, my cousin Deanne Manis, yes, who's you. a well-known broadcaster right. at the moment. Actually, she's what the top of her game. Deanne got a job at the traffic desk and we were at a Sunday Oi, um, Mel, write down Leanne's name. We must get to speak to her. Um, my family, she's my cousin. We were at a Sunday lunch and she said to me she's got a job working at 702's traffic desk at 10 rand an hour. And I said, oh, oh, that would be a dream <laughs> to be in that newsroom, to meet the likes of Jenny Chris Williams and Jeremy Mansfield yeah, Jimmy and Jeremy Mags. Mags and Deborah Petter. And I mean, these were the names of, of broadcasting, David O'Sullivan and Jane Hicks. Yes. And um, she said, okay, I'll phone a friend who got me the job, who runs a traffic desk called Aki Anastasio, the Mad Greek. So I dressed up in a suit and a tie, weighing 180 kilograms, and I arrived at Prime Media for an interview with Aki Anastasio. And I sat there with Barbara, the receptionist, me sitting on the on the um, the couch waiting for this meeting with Aki. <laughs> and I get a phone call to say, "Sorry, Aki he needs to do this interview on the telephone because he's about to arrive at Red Airport to go and fly and do the traffic reports mm -hmm. in the afternoon." I pick up the phone and he says, hey, I heard you okay. I said, yes, I am, but I'm dressed to the... He said, um, do you want to work at the traffic desk? I said, he said, you got the job. And that was that. Just like that. I came to work the first week at 702 <laughs> wearing a suit and a tie. And you know that yeah. in radio, no one wears a suit and a tie, especially not the guy going to the traffic desk yeah. and writing the traffic reports. And I fell in love with, with the, the, the movement of a radio station and how it worked, and the news desk, and being in the newsroom, and seeing these personalities. And all I was doing was writing, there's an accident at the corner of William Nickel and Bryanson Drive, and putting it on in front of Jenny Chris William, and then she would read my words. And I thought, that's amazing. <laughs> how, how silly. And then the, a lady called Patty Clay. Yes. Um, walks into the newsroom and said, we don't have a producer for the computer show with a guy called Mish Middleman. And he, she said, does anyone know anything about computers? Now, Jeremy, I can't turn on a computer, mm. but I was studying information systems at Fitz University. So I said, well, I'm studying information systems. Let me produce 
one of the, the, the seven to nine t uh, radio slots. And cut a long story short, I went back to the university. I got all these clever dudes to put one of the best shows together. I got paid 250 rand. It cost me 800 rand. And it turned out to be one of the best computer shows that had ever been done by Mr. Middleman, he, in his own words. Mm -hmm. And Paddy said, you've got to do, start doing the actual service shows. And I started working with Professor Harry Seftel call screening. Oh, Larry. Uh, old H.H. Yeah, Honest yeah, Harry. H.H. Hello, Jeremy. Yes, hello, hello. Fish, fowl, and fiber. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I fell in love with, with broadcasting. I fell in love with radio. I left university. I left Fitz doing my BCom to go and pursue this at the age of uh, 20 years old. And, and that's how I got into radio. And then... Who was cleaning the back room was a guy called Gareth Cliff. Mm -hmm. Who was busy as a junior reporter was a lady called Katie Catapodis. Mm -hmm. Who was a, a little guy that we used to, used to throw in a bit here and there from the Lodium Sum was Yusuf Abramji. Yeah, that's right. Um, who used to be sitting uh, on the weekend news desk was Vuyo Mbuli, um, the, the, the late Vuyo. Uh, and, and that's how it started. Nolene would be doing... Uh, weekend news yeah. and Jeremy was the I mean Jeremy actually was Jeremy Max was so cross one day I remember he threw a computer out of a window mm. and then of course downstairs was half out stereo and there you saw the likes of Jeremy Mansfield and Louis Sinclair and 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 I was blown away by this world but I, I bl was blown away at school by this world because I had a little a little radio that used to go into my ear while I was just sitting in class and it used to only pick up really AM. Mm -hmm. And I used to listen to 702 in school. And I used to listen to what was going on with the conflict within South Africa in those mm -hmm. mid-90s. Mm -hmm. And I used to listen to and love the likes of John Burks with the crime, nine, crime at nine and all that type of stuff. And I loved all that stuff. And um, and that's how I loved it. And I loved 702. So 702 became my idol. It was like, the greatest thing to actually ever go and work there. Um, and I loved you and Jenny, because you remember you and Jenny used to be on 702 together. That's right. And I will never forget one of the best things, I, most captivating pieces of radio I ever listened to was Mansfield go, sneaking into a hospital while, Jeremy, uh, while Jenny Chris Williams was having surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And the whole show came from the hospital. But it was brilliant. And and that's how I fell in love with the radio. I remember asking her, she said, I've got to go in for surgery. And I said, on air, I said to her, oh, well, what, what do you have to have done? She said, no, that's very personal. I said, well, <laughs> I'm going to find out what you're having done. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and that was that. Yeah. And then, of course, when <laughs> I had the, the pleasure of Berksy walking through the studio, coming back to radio, to mm -hmm. 702 at the time, Remember, they decided to do a bit more light entertainment in the morning. They wanted to, the station was obviously on a on a down downfall, and um, John Burks decided he was going to join up with Gareth Cliff. But they were very similar egos, mm. and I could. Rita Brunberg, who was the station manager at the time, said, "You know, these guys are are conflicting a bit. Um, we need someone else to produce him and to be his foil on air." And he said, "Who's the chubby guy?" Who's the, who's the chubby guy? And she said, well, that's the guy that's doing 12 at night to three in the morning, uh, 12 at night to three, and goes through three to six, we'll swap him around. And I started with Burks, and I produced Burks for over a year. I was his foil on the show, and he called me Chubby. Chubby Ford. Chubby Ford. Chubby Ford, and here we go with Chubby. Chubby, what's happening in the, tra in the traffic? And traffic. Chubby, what, what is going on with the traffic what, what in this city? On? Yeah. You should know. Yeah. I head down, I am iron, iron the ball. You should know. You are the traffic man. Yeah, that's him. That's it. And I remember that even though similar to be with the same family, uh, you'd be downstairs doing your show. And I remember you even a couple of times calling into John's show from your yeah. show while you were, there was a music break yeah. to do one of his callings, yeah. uh, Fricky. Yeah. Or, Yes, so hello to them. Hello, 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 Mr. Burr. Hello, Mr. Burr. It's so nice to talk to you. And, and it was just that relationship that, we, that we, we had between... John was incredible. I got into a lot of trouble with John. John made a lot of trouble for me. 
because I got uh, suspended mm-hmm. because uh, the, there was a very bad airplane accident. A plane had crashed on the highway, taking off from Rand Airport. Mm. And John had asked me to bring a porn star into studio. And he took my hand as I was about to read this, and of the people, the fatalities, and he put my hand on her private parts. And I jumped and started laughing. <laughs> saying that they, and Venus said, well, he cannot be in the studio with Berksy laughing. And the, the people complained, how can you laugh? And two people had died in a plane crash. And I'm not dumb to laugh now. But he got me into a lot of fun and a lot of trouble, and I loved every second of it. And I got captivated by broadcasting and radio and telling stories. And John had a way to extract a story out of people that was really great, similar to what you can do. Yeah, you see, John had a way... It could have been, the story could have been that short. John would have made it that long because he had the ability to go back on stories. So, Tani Tani Vilma is phoning from Krugersdorp and she's telling Mr. Burks about the, the sewage problem that they're having. And he's umming and aahing and to agreeing with her and so so wait hold, hold on hold on here Tony Wilma are you telling me that there's sewage running down the pavement in in Crisdor yes <laughs> Mr. Bergs it's running here by the streets in <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe it. Because, you know, Krugersdorp was a very, very upstanding <laughs> city when I was growing up. <laughs> and I, I can't envisage the <laughs> waste. Let's call it, let's, should we call it waste, Tony Wilma? <laughs> yes, waste running down the streets. <laughs> we, 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 we were the waste running down the streets in those days. Yeah. That's uh, with no shoes. Yeah. And, and we're pulling the story out. And, and creating the story. And, and radio then became, became, it was bigger than, he was able to create pain pictures. And that's what the best of, of radio was, Jeremy. The, the best of, 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 of all that we did in radio was to paint pictures for people, make their day better, make the, enlighten their lives a little bit, make them laugh, make them win a cup or a t-shirt or a prize, make dreams come to, true. Um, I remember I, I created a television show, which later they signed you and they didn't sign me, but it was dream makers and making people's dreams come true. Mm-hmm. And I loved that you did that. And radio, we could do that, you know, um, there was a child that was born with an abnormality that needed an op urgently. And I walked into Nolene's show and I said to Nolene, we should do something about this kid. It's at 10 o'clock. Uh, they get, no one's paying for this operation. So she said, Alwa, why don't we, this is on 702, why don't we call, call the public to try and raise some funds for this child? There's a baby on the front page of the star. Had an enlarged head and needed that, that, you know, that operation to take the pressure off the brain. And, and we raised that day 1.2 million rand just by, the, by starting it on radio at 10 o'clock in the morning that we followed it through for, till the end of the day and you could do stuff like that as well radio we could connect people were our friends our listeners were our friends our listeners knew us so they would come up just in the street and you know this and say oh i thought you're on diet why are you eating chips <laughs> why are you eating an ice cream um and then i transitioned from the radio into television um it just took me in that direction. I worked with Gareth Clifford, as you know, at 702. He went off to 5FM, and I just didn't feel the music of 5FM. And I wasn't a music diff diff ravey type of person. So I thought, why don't you do talk radio on television? So I took an idea to a guy called Donny Ferreira, and we created a show called Three Talk. And it was the same at your service pillars of 702. I just copied 702 and put it on television. And it became the leading talk show, a three talk with Nolene. She said she's too fat for. I said, I'm too fat for television. I'm like, there's a woman in America called Oprah, because Oprah hadn't come to South Africa yet, the, the show. And she is a fat lady, and she's a lady of color, 
and you're a lady of color and you're a fat lady, we could make this work. And that's how we started. And um, Sally Burdett, by the way, was my first presenter and uh, Bertha Chiruma of that show. And that's how I, I, I broke into television. And I had the pleasure of interviewing thousands of people through Nolene, obviously. Uh, we interviewed thousands of people, uh, the most compelling stories. For, but everybody from a Bill Clinton to a Lance Armstrong to a Celine Dion, we had them all. But, uh, but it wasn't those people that were the people that blew me away. There was one story that I keep in my mind as one of my greatest experiences of television was when we did a show on what does it mean to be deaf. And a woman uh, who was Miss, Miss Deaf South Africa sat on the show and explained to Nadine, we had signers and sign language people in, and this lady turned around and said to Nadine how her life had changed because she got stuck on the highway and she could SMS her dad to come and help her. But in the past, she, no one could help her. And I burst into tears on this television show thinking to myself how I've taken my hearing for granted mm. and how at that stage DVDs you could put the, the titles, mm. the subtitles. So it was stories like that that changed my life, not necessarily the stories of Bill Clinton mm. or Lionel Richie. And, um, and my broadcasting career, radio was my university and television became my, my life. That's, and I learned so much from people. But what I said <clears throat> right at the beginning of the show, you are probably one of the most prolific television producers in this country that this country has ever seen. You know, you've got television producers who've got names because of the shows they, they do. I mean, George Masarakis is, oh. is, a, is a name because he's been doing... He's executive producer of the longest running show in, in this country. Mm. Correct. Carte Blanche. Carte Blanche. But you have, <clears throat> you've, you've been, <clears throat> trying to th think of it, it just, you, you've been a television bunny. You've hopped and done all sorts of things in TV. And, Everything from reality. Mm. Well, Jeremy, I, I did it I, I, because it was a survival game a lot of the time. Mm. To keep my head above water, you're in your own, your own business, your own production company. You know when you do a show like this, you, you, you know that this is your bread and butter. So you, you've, got to, uh, you've got to keep your head above water. You've got to come up with new ideas. You've got to reinvent yourself all the time. Mm. Um, but we also had a big problem because we had an issue where the SABC stopped paying producers. And I had to go get advertisers funded programming. I had to do, I, I went around it a different way. I started using clients' money to make television shows. Mm -hmm. So for example, I'd use Radox to do a show on stress and relaxation. So we created a show called Life's a Journey. We used Bright Rock Insurers to do a show called Farana Dunga mit Rude Landman, which is about change moments. Uh, we got uh, Adcock Ingram OTC sponsors of Brave doing they looked up on CakeNet. So I had to get the money and bring it into the, mm. I did it a, a, another way around because there was no money. Because like most state entities, they were ransacked. Mm. Um, but it also controlled what I could do and what I could own um, from a television point of view. Uh, but yes, you have to reinvent yourself all the time. But I, I always said the, the following. I never wanted to do a show or create a television show, Jeremy, that was, it was to put people down. I wanted to lift people up. I never wanted to do a, man, uh, uh, a Jerry Springer show that broke families. Yeah. I wanted to build families. Yeah. I wanted to, and I, I'm not trying to sound like a son hero, but I wanted to do things that were going to talk about. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm going through uh, grief at the moment, and you've been through grief recently. And I remember interviewing Charlene Surti Richards about the death of her mom. And how broken her heart was. And I thought to myself, this helps other people understand grief if they're going through it. Because there's, there's, a, there's a great saying that I, I once learned from a metaphysical counselor who said, welcome to the human race, you're not alone. 
And <clears throat> if we're able to put people on the same page, <clears throat> and, you're able to, and someone can turn on the television and go, oh, wow, I'm in a similar position. Oh, I can identify with Circulisi mm -hmm. being on the streets without shoes and coming from that background. Or I can identify grief with Charlene Surti Richards. Or if I can, I can, I know what it feels like to lose a child with Bernadette Munzer and the book that she wrote. Or, you know, mm -hmm. or, I, or I know what it's like to have a family member with a disability. Mm -hmm. And if we can talk about these things and we make people feel that we're all the same, and we've all got issues, and we're all dealing with things like depression and anxiety, and we've all got things like cancer in our families that we've got to deal with, we're all going to have certain... The minute that you, it takes loneliness away from a person, and if you can make people not feel alone and feel that support that they're actually a part of a bigger collective community, it's the best thing. And that's what I try to do. It's not what you try to do, it's what you do. No. And we appreciate it. For, we appreciate you. But it's what you did as well. So I learned from some of the best. Never take the credit from people around us. That's what we did. I learned and I sponged up from watching the likes of yourself, John Burks, learning uh, from, and we could do it through, through fun as well. Eh? You never had to be serious all the time. But learning that on radio was a great way for me to start. And I, I admired watching the, what happened overseas. And we could often use um, people like Oprah to think of that woman and Ellen. If they can do those things and make people laugh and give people money and change people's lives, we can do the same thing. And at the moment, we do a, a segment in one of the television shows I've got on CakeNet where we give 10,000 rand away a week and we highlight making somebody's dream come true, but we also highlight a charity or an NGO or a person that needs something. And now we're telling brave stories because I, I've worked out something, Jeremy. Um, waking up in the morning, you have to be brave. Mm. doesn't matter who you are. Mm. You, congratulations to you for getting up this morning you are extremely brave, just to get up. <laughs> sure. You know how, that, how crazy that is? Mm. With what is going on around us? Mm. But it's true. So if we can now acknowledge the bravery of just, just being human beings, that's being a good mom, being a great dad, being a good partner in life, being good to one another, kindness is a good thing. I sound like a saint, I'm not. <laughs> I'm actually a naughty bugger sometimes. <laughs> You're an naughty bugger most of the time. Most of the time, yeah. And that's why I wonder you, this is one of the reasons why we love you. In I, like, I like being with naughty. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Mischievous. Ta -ta. Uh, Alan Ford. It's been so wonderful. It's been absolutely wonderful. Our guest on Mansfield today, look out for those things right at the end of the credits. Somewhere on a show that lifts you up, you're going to see Executive producer, Ellen Ford. This is him. Love you, Jeremy. We could cut him into three and make three people, to be honest, but he's a guy. <laughs> I've been, wait, good God, it's all up and down. Isn't it horrible? This weight thing, you're looking so great. I just, drew. lose 40 kilos, lose 50 kilos. Pick up 50 kilos, lose 90 kilos. Between Harry Sidoropoulos and myself, if you only know. <laughs> we, we, I seriously, I could, I, could, I could use the skin as handbags. Just keep cutting it off. And just, and you could have my skin. Yeah. You're oh. chop. You're absolutely tough. I actually don't know how to end this show. <laughs> Can I tell you one thing? Right. And this is not going to help anybody because it's not, that doesn't speak to cancer, to, to, helping people with skin cancer. But let me tell you one thing. Bacon always looks better crispy, so I lie in the sun a lot. <laughs> End it like that. Piss off now. <laughs> Can I get off the couch? <laughs> Bye. I hope you enjoyed being with us. I certainly did. We'll be with you, back with you next Saturday, speaking to... Somebody else, I don't know who it's going to be, but I can tell you one thing, it won't be as much fun as this. <laughs> you don't get much more fun than Alan Ford. Cherry pie.